Okay, welcome to this episode, episode 18. And um, I'm in this episode, I'm painting a little cottage um, in the country. So um, welcome. Hi, I'm David and I paint watercolors. I just love being outdoors and I hope these videos inspire you to do the same. So um, subscribe and welcome. In this episode, I'm in Gola, which is uh, south of uh, Stockholm. It's my first little adventure using my camper van. Um, so it's, I'm walking around and I'm trying to find something to sketch. So it's, it's beautiful in Gola. Yeah, no, um, I've been wandering around G Gola and um, I found this. And um, I thought I'd um, give it a go and sketch it. So the first thing to do, basically, that I do anyway when I'm doing a sketch is um, I, I look for, you know, what's the composition? What, what's my point of focus? Um, and in this case, it's the, the, the doorway there. So I s start um, I usually try and draw as little as possible, um, but in this case, there's um, there's quite a lot of detailing with the with the white borders on the traditional Swedish summer uh, cottage. So I'm using a little bit of Vidisha blue here, and um, I'll probably work in a little bit of cobalt. Yeah, there you go. And oh yeah, here's um, it's pollen. Um, I took this um, close to the campsite. Uh, there's my van. Just thought I'd pop that in. Yep. Anyway, back to the um, well, the sketch, and um, yeah, I'm just working in this, the blue and trying to capture the lovely, sun, lovely sunny day. Yeah, I'm using a Winsor Newton field palette. Uh, I've been using this for many years. And um, these are Skoda travel brushes um, I've also had for many years. Uh, they're squ squirrel hair. And here's a list of my watercolors that I use in my field palette. Um, you probably want to press pause if you want to read that. So now um, I've started putting in the trees. And I don't want them to... I want them to be in the very much in the background, so that's why I'm doing it wet and wet. Um, I'm being careful not to put in too much because it'll just fill and uh, become a kind of a blob. We don't want that. So um, I put it in slowly and um, yeah, just keep working on it. Here I'm choosing a cooler color because I want the trees to feel like they're further back. Uh, otherwise, uh, it would be just a straight line. And I'm um, starting to use the back of my nail here just to create a bit of um, structure, texture. Also, a feeling of branches maybe when it's still wet. And there's a little picture of me painting away, yeah. So now I'm going to work on the the actual house. And here I just have kind of my first wash, you could say, is a it's an orange color and um, I want this kind of transparency and um, so I'm just going to paint this on carefully because uh, of all, all the um, board, the, the skirting boards, um, I think it's, is that what they're called? The Basically the edges of the house which are wh white and um, as I'm not using masking fluid, I don't, I don't like masking fluid, I think it's creates um, static lines that I don't enjoy. 
Um, so, yeah, so I'm, yeah, because I'm not using masking fluid, I have to um, be careful. And so I've changed to a small brush here and um, I'm just working in that orange background color. And uh, later I'll put on more reds and things that to, to, to create the feeling of, of a typical Swedish house. So yeah, careful, careful. So I go slow here. I don't like going slow. Um, I prefer to be quicker, um, but I have no choice here. It's a fiddly little composition. And basically I think that's why I chose it. It was, um, you know, uh, normally I'm doing big skies and um, the sea and things and um, which are quick and I enjoy. But um, here I just wanted to try and uh, capture um, a typical Swedish cottage. And so I'm working here on the, the, you could say the front door of the house, but I didn't want that to be my uh, focus. Um, and so this will just kind of just blur off in the end um, as I get to the end of the painting. Okay, I've moved to a slightly larger brush and I'm going to put in the, um, the foreground, which is, um, you know, grass, shrubbery. Um, the orange there is still a bit damp, so I'm working it in. The advantage of having some soft colors blending into each other is that later, if you want it to be hard, you can. You can, you can put um, some, sh some slightly darker colors on top of the, um, the soft greens and to create edges, etc. But it's important um, at the right time to um, to um, put in the colors. Right. Anyway, I'm working on the fence here, and um, I don't want it to stand out too much, so that's why I'm working on it here to um, to put it in, but also to take it out. You could say um, I just wanted to put a feeling. I don't want it blocking the. the entrance into the picture. And here you can see I'm actually thinking a bit. I don't know what I'm doing, but that's okay. That's the way it is. I'm blending here a little bit because I'm trying to um, get rid of those any hard edges. I like to put the hard edges in last, you could say. And here I'm dirtying the um, the roof, you could say. I'm trying to make it more natural. And um, so there's lots of moss on the roofs. Yeah, so now I'm gonna start working on the um, the actual red you could say of the houses the house the outhouse and the and the little cottage um it's um I'm trying to find the correct red because i don't want it to be too dark or too dominant because it'll um kill the the feeling of light so it's um yeah finding the balance I'm trying to keep my strokes confident and um, deliberate, um, even when I'm detailing. Um, it's important for the freshness of the painting to um, to not 
fiddle about too much to have a, a kind of a definite stroke. We tend to fiddle about when we're not sure what we're doing. And um, although I'm not sure what I'm doing either, I, I, I try to, to create the impression I, I do. So here I'm um, working on getting the, creating the three-dimensional effect, um, putting the, the shadow from, uh, from the roof. So I'm working that in. It's kind of a, quite a thick pigment because the, the paper is still quite wet, and um, so 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 um, the thicker the better because it doesn't spread. And so I continue to the house and um, trying to find the right balance there. It doesn't feel good right now. But um, I'll work on it. At the midpoint of paintings like this, um, things don't normally look so good. It's, it's only until you start putting in the darks that you have the um, that you get your full range of tonal values and then, then the things start looking three-dimensional. But in the midpoint, it's, um, they can look pretty dreadful. So now, you know, now I'm getting to the thankful, the, the, the more pleasing stage where I'm actually putting in um, the darks. And here, here I'm creating um, a feeling of um, that there's trees to the right hand side that are out of pic picture. And um, so I'm creating this kind of mottled effect in, um, in a purpley hue. Um, I, I don't like going too purple, but again, like the impression is it creates a great feeling of warmth if you have, um, you, you know, you're an, an opposite to, to, um, to when it comes to your colors, so it's, in this case, um, purple is, is basically an opposite of green. And here I'm just um, working on the foreground. I flipped the board. This is a great thing about not having a sketchbook. So um, just having it taped on the board is that I can I flip the board around, I can, you know, angle it, um, and I enjoy this actually. I've started this year doing this, and um, um, so I, I cut up some sheets of paper and I bring them in my sketch bag, and, um, and um, yeah, I'm happy with this. Anyway, I'm taking my time here. Um, I hope I'm not boring it too much. I'm trying to sculpt that house, so I'm trying to create um, the three-dimensional feeling. So I'm putting in some darks here. While trying to maintain the summery light. This was the challenge of the painting was that um, I want to have a kind of a summery feeling, so hence the um, yeah the, the violet colors on the grass and things. 
and the, the shading of the house as well. So the violet colors really bring out the um, the pale greens and oranges and things like that, make them pop a little bit. Um, it's slow this, um, but also fun. It's, um, I found the brushes, my travel brushes, they're quite round. Um, they're not pointy like my Da Vinci brushes. And um, which creates a little problem for detailing. Um, they're a bit clumsy. Uh, they don't have a good point. But uh, they're travel brushes and they, they work very well for that purpose. Yeah, I put in some darks there and I'm not totally happy with them, so I'm going to kind of mess them up a little bit with my finger. Um, yeah, you can do that. And also, the little line there is a bit too dark, so I'm kind of taking the color back out of the line. Okay, I'm getting to the end of this. Um, yeah. Bit of blue there. Yeah, that's nice. So, the, yeah, the last little details like that are, uh, take a lot of time. But, um, and of course, one can has to be careful because one can totally mess up the whole painting if one fiddles too much. Anyway. That's it. Um, that was the sketch, and um, yeah, I was, I was happy with that. I think I, I captured the, the feeling. Okay, well, I enjoyed that. Um, now it's time to go and get some lunch, go back to the camping place where I am. Um, okay, if you enjoyed this video, you know, um, give it a like, and um, Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Okay, if you want to support this channel, you can by visiting patreon.com. Uh, my address is uh, patreon.com slash meldramart. There is lots of uh, bonus material and a weekly vlog, um, so um, you get all the latest there. Okay, cheers.